uh, to everyone. Uh, as per usual, it's my task to share with you the Health Emergency Operating Center Situation Report for today, September the 30th, the last day of September. The world marks one million deaths from COVID-19. It's been about nine months since we've been discussing the SARS-CoV-2 virus or the coronavirus disease. And nine months after it first appeared, the virus shows little sign of abating. The virus is not through with us yet said family physician and epidemiologist Kamara Phyllis-Jones of Morehouse School of Medicine. The virus has only one job, and that's to replicate itself and to go from person to person. And it doesn't care which person. The public health measures that we have been uh, explaining over these past months, these are the gateway, the vehicle, the pathway, to our reopening our country. In St. Kitts and Nevis, we've reported 19 uh, confirmed cases of coronavirus disease so far. 17 of these cases have recovered. We have two active cases at present, and they are stable. In the Caribbean region, there has been 220,000 confirmed cases. Over a little over 128,000 of these have recovered, and the death toll in the Caribbean region continues to be low. And we hope that this trend continues. It's at about 3,900 persons who have died so far. Just to give you an idea as to what's happening in our neighboring territories, uh, in Anguilla, they've reported three cases, Montserrat 13, Grenada 24 to date, Dominica reported 25 cases to date, St. Lucia 27, Antigua and Barbuda, they are now up to 101, St. Vincent and the Grenadines 64, Barbados 190, the Turks and Caicos 686, Bahamas, 3,900, Trinidad and Tobago is almost at 4,500, and Jamaica is over or almost 6,500 cases of coronavirus disease. In the United States of America, they have reported over 7 million confirmed cases so far, and their death toll have passed the 200,000 mark. They are at 206,000 as we speak. Globally, based on the World Health Organization's dashboard, internationally, there has been 33,249,563 confirmed cases. And today, the death toll globally has passed the 1 million mark. It's at 1 million and 40. In St. Kitts and Nevis, we continue testing uh, persons who are suspected of coronavirus disease. We conti continue testing the nationals who return home. So far, we've tested 2,406 persons. At present, we have 150 persons quarantined in a facility, either government designated or at the Ro uh, Ross University School of Veterinary Medicine dorm. Uh, we have two persons who are in isolation as we speak. To date, a total of 418 nationals have returned to the Federation, and this is between April the 24th to today, September the 30th. Uh, as we mentioned last week, uh, we had the third batch of students returning uh, for the Ross University School of Veterinary Medicine, and at present, 124 students 
are in quarantine uh, in the dorms on campus. Now, uh, I, I subscribe to The Economist mag magazine, and we read there that the pandemic, uh, the articles confirm that the pandemic is plunging millions of persons uh, globally back into poverty. Between 1990 and 2019, the number of extremely poor persons, they were estimated to be uh, at about 2 billion. And the, the article says that the, the number of persons who are extremely poor fell from 2 billion, or 36% of the world's population, to 630 million, or just at about 8%. Most of these persons resided, uh, reside in sub-Saharan Africa and countries that are driven by conflict. The economic crisis that is caused by this COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated inequalities internationally. And the researchers from Oxford, Oxford University reckon that the COVID-19 pandemic could cast 490 million persons in 70 countries back into poverty, reversing almost a decade of gains. For example, relatives or relatives in the richer countries at present, they are not even able uh, to send extra cash back home. In other words, remittances have dropped. The economic crisis is already turning into a food crisis. In other words, the number of persons unable to afford enough food to eat is increasing. Let's talk about schools. The disruption to education will have long-term consequences on our children. The coronavirus disease pandemic is also affecting and impacting healthcare systems across the globe. The harm to healthcare systems will be long-lasting. For example, the outbreaks and the lockdowns have impacted vaccination rates. Uh, the researchers tell us that the coverage, vaccination coverage, has fallen. In St. Kitts and Nevis, on, the, on March 25th, our borders were closed. So it's been six months since our borders have been closed. Zero tourist arrivals over this period. We've noted a decrease in income, a decrease in government revenue and taxes. Ladies and gentlemen, we must reopen our borders. There must be a careful balance between the public health measures that you hear us speak about daily and the facilitation of economic activity. The aim is to reopen our borders safely with minimum risk of reintroduction of the virus. At present, all the relevant stakeholders, including the Ministry of Health and the various subsectors in the tourism subsector, they are presently developing appropriate protocols. Appropriate protocols are being developed to ensure the safety of our people. We need the cooperation of the general public regarding the adherence to the prevention measures, the wearing of the face mask, the hand hygiene, sanitation, physical distancing, social distancing. Because when we do reopen our borders, we have to adhere to these prevention measures in order to prevent a surge in COVID-19 cases. Ladies and gentlemen, we must prevent a second lockdown. When you look at countries who have gone before us, right, the lockdowns have frozen entire economies. And the second lockdown is usually much longer than the first. For example, the Israel is now in a second lockdown. Uh, Netanyahu said that um, it's going to be for a month at least or even longer. Uh, there are other countries that are noting a resurgence in the number of cases. Ontario, Canada, the Netherlands, and some of the countries in Africa. And they are going into a second lockdown. 
The second lockdown is much longer, and it should be our aim to prevent a second lockdown. We are preparing for the second wave or an increase or a surge in cases. And so the medical team has developed the St. Kitts and Nevis guidelines for the clinical management of moderate to severe COVID-19 disease. What we are thinking is that when we do uh, see that second wave of cases, we may have individuals who would become severely ill or even critically ill. And so we are ready to manage such cases. And so two continuous medical education sessions are scheduled for October 7th and 14th. And all medical practitioners within the Federation are invited to attend these sessions. You can attend either in person or virtually. Uh, a Zoom link will be uh, distributed for all medical practitioners. At present, there is no known specific cure for COVID-19. So there isn't a medication that has been identified to cure uh, this very contagious illness. And so the mainstay of treatment to date remains supportive therapy, whereby if you are dehydrated, they give you uh, IV fluids. If you have a fever, you are given anti-fever medication. If you are experiencing pain, you are given painkillers. And along with the use of a combination of existing medications found to be helpful so far. And some of these medications include uh, immunosupportive therapy, uh, like supplements, vitamin C, zinc, magnesium, etc. It also includes uh, the use of steroids, corticosteroids. It also involves the use of anti-clot medication, anti-thrombotic uh, medication, and uh, antibiotics, for example, macrolides. So these are just a few examples of the existing medication found to be useful or helpful so far. There have been questions about the COVID-19 vaccine. Although COVID-19 vaccine candidates have progressed to, at, to the advanced stages at exceptional speed, many uncertainties remain. At the recently concluded 58th Directing Council of the Pan American Health Organization that ended yesterday, uh, we were told that at present there are 191 vaccine candidates. Of these, 10 of these vaccine candidates have reached phase three clinical evaluation. All right, and so that's hopeful, but then there are still many uncertainties because they have to be fully evaluated and proven to be efficacious and safe before they can be approved for use uh, globally. St. Kitts and Nevis has signed on to the COVAX facility. We've actually signed uh, the commitment agreement for the COVAX facility, which is actually an international or global facility that affords member states uh, the opportunity to be able to access vaccines once they become available. The COVAX facility aims to have 2 billion doses of a safe and efficacious vaccine available globally by the end of 2021. And so yes, as a federation, we have signed uh, the commitment agreement uh, for this facility. Thank you.